I think that the dissident tradition allows us to talk uh, about a we in Britain uh, that isn't just either about uh, pride or shame. Uh, what it allows uh, young Britons of different backgrounds to do is to say, well, actually, uh, it's not as though there was a period which was either all about uh, shame or all about pride, that actually uh, people from whom we are descended, whether they are within Britain or outside Britain, challenged the empire. Uh, they had a kind of moral perspective on empire all along. Um, and, and this was not a moral perspective that simply said, uh, uh, you know, uh, we should be uh, simply be ashamed. I think it was saying that we have a moral responsibility to ally ourselves with those who are at the receiving end of inequality, exploitation and violence. And one of the great things about this tradition, I think, is that it constantly made comparisons between people who were being exploited in Britain uh, by the British ruling classes, the wealthy and the powerful, and imperial rule out in the colonies. And it, it, it frequently said that the we that we consider ourselves to be is not a national we alone, uh, that the British working classes, uh, British women, and the colonized have more in common with each other than they do with their respective ruling classes. So I think it gives people access to a more complicated history of dialogue uh, and debate around the question of empire than you know, either pride, which absolutely makes no sense, um, or shame and atonement, which I think are equally useless um, as kind of emotional responses to past history. I think that there was a much more engaged and vibrant tradition of opposition within and without Britain. And that's a we that people can actually uh, turn to when thinking about their relationship to empire.